distinguished guest, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Director of the Swami Vivekanandan Cultural Center in Durban, Mrs. Mogi Govinda, Mr. J. Pillay, Mr. Simpiwe Umchunu, Mr. Shashil Manur, and our wonderful online viewers, Aini Leka Srikisun, would like to welcome you to this, the 16th episode of Bharat Ek Anubuddhi, India, A Feeling. Namaste and Vanakam to one and all. Bharat Ek Anubuddhi, India, A Feeling, is an online travelogue series. And this evening, our guests will take us through their journey in India. I would like to take this opportunity to invite the one who gives direction to every student and teacher in the school. She has been a guiding light and has always encouraged her students to give their best. She makes the task of running the school look so smooth as she silently and effortlessly manages this mammoth task. All her students look up to her and dream of being like her. Let us welcome Mrs. Morgi Govinda, principal of Stern Grove Primary School in Phoenix as she narrates her journey of India to us. Welcome, Mrs. Morgi Govinda. Vanakam, namaste. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. It's an absolute pleasure to be part of the series this evening. India, where does one begin? Do we start in the north or do we start in the south? But for my family and I, India will be a never ending journey. It all started in 2006 when my husband, myself and my, both my sons who were quite young, they were just in their teens when we decided to take them on this journey. What started as a pilgrimage initially as a pilgrimage turned out to be, I think my love affair with India, which is continuing. Since 2006, I've, we have traveled five times to India, the last journey being in 2019. Every trip has been different. It has captured a different part of my heart and my soul. From Rishikesh in the north to Rameshwaram in the south, every journey has allowed me to capture different memories. Pilgrimage being the first part of the trip took me to Shirdi in, uh, in Mumbai. Then we went to uh, Prashanti Nalayam. That's the, the house of our guru, Sri Satya Sai Baba. And then to Tirupati. I've made this journey to these pil uh, pilgrimage centers five times already. And it has been an eye-opening experience. I've never ever felt closer to God than being in India. The very people you interact with, many of them epitomize God-like qualities and the warmth, the passion for religion. I don't think there is any other place in the world where people are so passionate about religion. Rishikesh was beautiful. B bathing in the waters at Haridwar is a life-changing experience. Going up the mountains to Tirupati, words cannot explain the euphoria one feels. And I have been blessed and my family have been blessed that we were able to remove our hair, which is a sign of vanity. And we've done that five times. And I'm hoping to do more of that in the future. Um, India is absolutely exciting, it's vibrant, it's colorful, it never sleeps. Besides being um, having the religious aspect to it, there's this beauty in the architecture, in the buildings, in the temple. And when one looks at it, one can only imagine the sacrifice and the time that the people are placed in, in, in having these buildings um, you know, epitomize such beauty and splendor and the ingenuity, the engineering behind the buildings. It's like a real mammoth task to come up with a, uh, buildings that are so magnificent. We've got lots of pictures. I love taking pictures 
And India certainly has the most beautiful backgrounds um, for, for taking out pictures from the Taj Mahal sitting at uh, the Diana bench and taking out a picture to taking out pictures at the Mumbai gate, um, the gateway of India at Mumbai and the Delhi gate. And the good thing about all these tourist attractions is that they are on the spot photographers who do excellent jobs of snapping up pictures. So um, that also was very, very special uh, to us. The kindness, the humility, the genuineness of the people that approach you on the street, that want to strike up a conversation because they know you look Indian, but you a little bit different. So they're curious to know where you're from. And the minute that you speak to them, they know that you're a foreigner because you're, you have an accent. Uh, the people we've encountered have been absolutely helpful. They've been very, very um, uh, friendly, wanting to show us around, um, showing us um, you know, the best deals, ensuring that we don't miss certain tourist spots. And um, I would go back to India because of the people, their simplicity, their humility. Um, I've also loved the shopping. It goes without saying, the most beautiful uh, fabrics, the most beautiful jewelry, the most beautiful clothes, rich in color, texture. Um, well, that's every woman's dream. Fortunately, my husband allowed me to go wild with a credit card. So it, every trip became also a shopping trip, which I enjoyed. And um, the quality of the clothing was excellent. The salespeople always wanting to sell you everything, but also respecting uh, your boundaries. And yes, we did bargain. And I think both sides won at the end of it. Um, India is synonymous with um, Bollywood. And um, every time we looked around, hoping to come across a Bollywood actor or actress, um, unfortunately, during our travels, we didn't come across any. Um, cricket, my family, my children are cricket crazy. And um, we've been to the stadiums to take our pictures, wore the Chennai uh, Super Kings uh, colors, and that drew a lot of attention and conversation. Um, the easiest way to strike up conversation in India is to talk about cricket. And, um, and, and if they know you from South Africa, they consider you as a rival. And I am, and my husband and uh, one son and myself are Chennai Super King supporters. So that was, uh, we were able to uh, make a lot of conversation with regards uh, to sport. Um, astrology, India is also famous for astrology. And um, we, we, we've come across this on the streets where you have people uh, reading cards, wanting to read your palm. And we've had a few experiences of that. But I think um, for me, what stands out is going to these different temples, walking up the hills of Palani um, is a life altering experience because you meet people from all over the world that come to India to do these pilgrimages. And then you realize what comes across is that we all, we, we all have that one simple goal, and that is to reach God, to preach the word of God, to do good and to be good. And this is so evident at uh, Prashanti Nilayam, um, where people from all over converge just to ensure that their batteries are spiritually revived and recharged. And if anyone needs a, a spiritual upliftment, a spiritual recharging of the batteries, India is the place to be. The food was simply delectable, delicious. Being a vegetarian, it was not difficult to get food. Anywhere else in the world, it's difficult um, to get vegetarian food. But in India, definitely it was not a problem. I enjoyed the paneer tikka uh, burgers from McDonald's, the paneer, um, uh, the mushroom, uh, kadai. Um, there was a variety, the idli, the sambar, um, the dosa, the veda. The food was absolutely lovely. And um, 
yes, I'm looking forward to the next trip. And hopefully um, we would be able to travel within the next year or so back to India to recharge the batteries and um, to get back to me. It is my motherland and um, the land of my heart. It has captured my soul. Um, to new travelers, I would say, go with an open mind. Um, the country offers you everything. In, uh, from the first trip to 2006 and to the last trip in 2019, in terms of technology, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of the roads, the cities, the towns, they have really, really grown. There is tremendous improvement. You can see in terms of um, the people speaking, being so fluent in English, they have in a matter of 10 years, India has improved in leaps and bounds. Even you can see amongst the villages that their level of English has improved. They're able to communicate much better than uh, the very first time that we were there. And we've seen an improvement, not an improvement, a change um, in the way the people have moved from being rustic, a little bit rustic, um, to becoming more urbanized in terms of cleanliness. Uh, it has improved so much. Mumbai has gone so much cleaner than it was the first time. And um, definitely India is improving leaps and bounds in terms of technology, infrastructure, education. Um, almost everyone you meet and you talk to on the streets, they've, they've got uh, degrees, double degrees, MBAs, and um, it is, you know, um, really, really um, awesome to have conversations with people that um, are engineers and are able to give their views in terms of world economy. And you can really have an honest and an um, enlightening conversation with people on the street. And as I said initially, that they're very friendly. And when they know that you're from South Africa, they're like absolutely curious as to what is happening in the country. And then this leads on to, to lots and lots of, um, of conversations and, and interesting uh, topics. Um, what else can I say about India? Well, in terms of food, color, religion, people, they've got it all. The most luckiest country in the world and they seem to have it all. So um, the, for me, uh, travels uh, through India has been very, very good. The, the, initially, I said that we've uh, the first trip took us on a pilgrimage. The second trip was um, in the north, uh, going to the Taj Mahal, going to Rishikesh, Haridwar. It was really, um, you know, uh, a life-altering experience. And then coming down to Rameshwaram and going to the temple at Rameshwaram and looking at the artwork in the temple and looking at that architecture, it is absolutely mind-blowing. And then going to Kanyakumari and also visiting the Vivekananda rock and, you know, uh, going out there. Um, it's, it, it's amazing how clean and, and wonderful and serene uh, the place is at, uh, at Kanyakumari. And um, it is a must for every uh, traveler to go right down uh, to Kanyakumari and to visit uh, the Vivekananda rocks and the cultural center there. So um, memories of Kolaba in Mumbai, um, the hustle of Kolaba, trying to cross the street in the afternoon or in the day, uh, is equally difficult because of the traffic. I don't think I've come across uh, heavier traffic anywhere in the world than in India, especially on the streets of Kolaba. But that also is an enriching experience for me. And um, what, was, what also stands out is that in a busy street where there are shops and malls, you'd also find little temples. And then ag again here, it brings home the, um, the fact that, God, that the Indian people and God are one, that they, they never separate God from their daily existence. And this is so evident when you go into their shops and you see um, in, in, in the uh, shop um, center, 
that they have a little prayer place and um, God is first and foremost amongst all of them. And then you would find that when you are uh, on the streets, almost all of them will have a, a, a big dot on the forehead or they'll have a prayer um, ash mark on the forehead um, in the mornings stating that they've started the day with prayer. It was interesting to see that before they opened their shops or prayer places of business, they would also, they would do an offering in the morning and we'd find flowers sprinkled and we'd find garlands on the doorway. And these are little things, but they're so important because they, it shows their connection um, uh, to, the, uh, to the divine. And I suppose it's because of this that they have this uh, special, uh, because of the connection to the divine, that the humility, the simplicity, uh, the humbleness that comes out uh, amongst the Indian people. So um, <clears throat> I spoke about the food. Um, the other thing that I was completely mesmerized about was when we were in, in Jaipur and we looked at these magnificent palaces. And yet again, you'll ask yourself, how many years did it take for them to build these magnificent palaces? Every detail was taken into account. Um, when you look at the architecture, when you look at the rock formation, you look at the carvings on the buildings, such intricate workmanship and so much of thought went behind it. One can only compliment these people for their ingenuity and their artistry. And again, the rich vibrancy of the culture is evident in the buildings. And I would really love to go back to Jaipur because it, it is so historical and so, so beautiful. I think every part of India is beautiful. Being down in the South in Kerala was absolutely um, relaxing. Um, going on the houseboat, and, and spending a couple of nights on the houseboat, going for Ayurvedic um, and spa treatments. Re again, once again, absolutely relaxing, rejuvenating the mind, body, and spirit. And then again, the food complemented the treatments that we received in, in Kerala. Another beautiful place to be. Goa was exciting, it was busy, a little bit um, uh, too westernized, but it was a lovely experience being in Goa. And um, Mumbai. Mumbai, I think, is for me the heart of, um, of, of India. Um, everything takes place in India, uh, in Mumbai. And um, yeah, so that was absolutely lovely. And then the gardens, the hanging gardens in India, uh, in Mumbai. That for me was beautiful. Again, showing the, um, the, the style of the gardener, the, the, the way the gardens were laid out. So that was really, really very, very beautiful. And again, I need to compliment the Indian people in terms of the upkeep of their gardens and their national monuments. So um, yes, I, I, we've been to um, uh, a few monuments. I, I've been to the monuments in Chennai. I've been to um, the, uh, the art centers and I've enjoyed that. And as I said, I love shopping. So been to the malls and it was amazing. Uh, the malls are for really, really, very, very high standards. Um, uh, you can equate them to the malls here in, in, in Durban like Gateway and to the malls in Dubai really, really outstanding. Service was outstanding. And um, obviously all these um, uh, name brand malls in Mumbai and in Chennai and in Bangalore have all the brand name uh, stores. And it was um, a pleasure shopping at these malls. So that was like uh, one of the uh, good experiences also. Um, the Indian people are certainly the best hosts because um, they are very kind. They're very um, considerate and they, every shop you go to, before you even start looking around, um, uh, the shop owner or the salespeople 
are always kind enough wanting to offer you um, chai, they want to offer you some juice um, or some cool drink. And uh, again, bringing to the fore the hospitality of the Indian people. Um, we've come across um, some people selling on the street corners, always um, uh, wanting us to, uh, to have the best deals and we never disappoint, well, I never disappointed, always wanting to buy all the unique and beautiful stuff that was on sale. Um, India, as I said, place that has captured my heart and my soul, and I'm certainly coming back um, many, many times. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Mogi Govinda. From what you've just said, it's captured our hearts and we all would want to go there. And here's hoping the next time you do go, you will bump into a Bollywood star. I'm hoping to um, maybe meet um, Amitabh Bachchan at the Siddhi Vinayagat uh, Temple in Mumbai, if I'm lucky. Well, crossing our fingers, you will get lucky. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much once again. We are now going to play the incredible India video. Thereafter, I will introduce our next guest to you. much for that enlightening and wonderful video. I'm now going to introduce our second guest. The principal is the instructional leader of the building. Leadership defines how successful any school is. A school without a strong leader will definitely fail. Mr. Pillay's greatest strengths, which helped him to achieve a successful head position, are his logical and critical thinking ability to solve problems quickly and efficiently, excellent communication skills and management ability. He is indeed an inspirational leader to his staff and students. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you and welcome Mr. Jay Pillay to narrate his story and journey of India to us. Mr. Jay Pillay, welcome. Namaste and vanakkam to all. Namaste and vanakkam to the viewers out there. My name is Mr. Jay Pillay, and as you rightly pointed out, I'm the principal of Moreland's Primary. Um, my narration is going to begin with my fascination with India by the different people that I came into contact with in my life prior to going to India. Because you hear many stories of India from different people, and you hear different stories um, from, from them. And so when you venture out into this um, unknown territory that is going abroad for the first time, you will expect to see and hear everything that people have uh, told you about India. Unfortunately, it was not the case for me. When I touched down in India, it was something different. It, for me, the very first time I felt I was in the village of my ancestors. It was an ancestral calling. You feel, you feel as though that you belong. It is an indigenous feeling. Um, and so from the time that you touch down at the airport to the hotel, you are in, your, in the land of your own. I think our prior knowledge, our learning of Indus civilization, our learning of the uh, different uh, gods and, and, and culture and religion all plays a part when you want to experience this 
excitement of everything, you get euphoric about your experience. And so when you go out there to India, you get a, a feel of everything all at once. The culture, the religion, the people, the, 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 the art, the, 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 the outfits, the, the technology, and everything is sort of juxtaposed into one feeling of enlightenment and, 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 and excitement. And so this, is was, this was the feeling that I had when I uh, touched down in India for the very first time. I traveled through Mumbai, um, we went through to uh, Agra, we went through to um, Jaipur, and I was fortunate enough to spend my New Year's Eve at Jaipur. The people in India, absolutely friendly. Now, what I must stress that as a South African and as, um, as we know the tourist industry to be the new gold of the modern era, where you treat tourists like gold because you know that the tourist is a source of income to the economy. And so it seems as though the Indian people of India, they understand this. They understand this so well, because when you are, um, when, when they confront you or when you're confronted and, and, and you are uh, introduced as a South African or a, a person of, uh, from foreign country, you are received well and you are treated with respect. I, I found this to be strange because as I said, people who traveled in the past came up with different stories, but my experiences were all good. And I found the people of India to be absolutely friendly. Um, they showed you exactly where you wanted to go. For example, when you took a cab out, um, to, to places that you wanted to visit within the cities. You were, you were directed and given good um, uh, instructions as to what to look out for and what not to look out for. The people in the hotel, excellent staff, excellent reception, excellent service, the food, absolutely incredible. And so, as I said previously, it is a an experience where all in one, you experience everything together, the traditions, the food, the culture. And, and this was something that I really treasured. I wanna also mention that as a cricket enthusiast, uh, having watched the first um, India tour here to South Africa way back in the nineties, um, um, I think it was, um, uh, Sachin Tendulkar and uh, Mahmoud Azruddin came through to Durban. And so when I toured India, the first thing that caught my eye was the billboards. And it was not Bollywood as such. It was the cricket that was exposed the most. And Virat Kohli's um, adverts were right through the billboards. And because, and I think Virat Kohli was the, um, the, the, the national symbol at that point in time. Um, added to that was the, um, the, 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 the news that Virat Kohli was going to uh, marry Anushka Sharma. And, and, and so it gave you this uh, feeling of Bollywood and this fairy tale belief that, um, you know, it, you know it, it was like a, 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 a romantic story. And so all of that, gives you a pleasant feeling in a country that is um, captured by escapist cinema and, and, and fairy tale endings. Um, the trip to Agra and Taj Mahal, absolutely fascinating. I'm one of those that studied art and architecture uh, from my young days. Um, and and, and we, we studied many types of uh, buildings and uh, artworks and so on. The Taj Mahal, the craftsmanship that went into the Taj Mahal 
was absolutely fascinating. And we went through the little um, areas where the, um, the craftsmen were actually showing us how every minute detail that was manufactured was put together in this monumental uh, structure, the Taj Mahal. And again, an emotion, it was done out of love. Um, and it was a monumental piece, as I said, an exhilarating experience. It just stood up there and, and you were just overwhelmed by its presence. Um, you, 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 you find that in, in Agra, there's craftsmen right throughout. And I think they must be applauded for what they've given the world in terms of that, that structure. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely exhilarating. Uh, an experience unforgettable. Um, you know, my father traveled to India back in 1959. And, uh, and that was before I was born. And so he spent in, in his time in India, like about, he spent about six months when he traveled. And so all the pictures that you, that I've seen as a child in, in, through my childhood of him in the different areas of India, the gateway, the, um, uh, the Taj Mahal, the, um, you know, in the gardens and so on. I went through the same experiences and I felt so honored and so pleasurable to have gone through those same experiences and been in the same places. Again, I wanna say that it's like touching down with your ancestors, but although my, my experience in India was, was, um, was so much, uh, I, 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 I recall so much of my dad, my late dad traveling in India. It was also about his forefathers and, and our uh, ancestral uh, beginnings that was uh, maybe symbolic in my thoughts. Um, again, Indus Valley civilization, the, 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 the culture and the, and the, um, um, the workmanship, the, the craftsmanship that it gave to the world. Absolutely fascinating. It was also um, part of my education. And so going through India, it was like living what you had experienced in the textbooks. From a very uh, young age, we only read and we saw uh, pictures of all the monuments, of all the uh, crafts, of all the gods, of all the temples um, in, in books. But as you drive through with the tour bus and as you go through walking the streets of India and walking, going through the tourist um, destinations, you experience this childhood fascination with the subject matter that, uh, that I just related to you. And that was an exhilarating feeling, just absolutely mind blowing. Um, the, the museum in, um, in Delhi, I think it was Delhi or Mumbai. I'm not, I think it was in Mumbai, right? For me being a uh, science and technology uh, man, also history, um, I was asked, I was told that this world would be a very fascinating experience. And so I visited the museum and it was absolutely great, a great experience for me. It, it takes you through India from the historic times, exactly what happened through the civil war and how India was formed, um, how Pakistan was formed, how Hindustan was formed. And then you see India in terms of its infrastructure, you see India in terms of its technology and the advancements that it's making. So it was science, technology, and of course, a, the uh, planetarium. And so in, 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 in one experience, you will get to know what India is all about from the historical times to the current. And that for me was absolutely um, awesome, engaging overwhelming. And whilst I was there, we met lots of students, lots of 
uh, children visiting the museum. And so we interacted with them and we got to know the level of intellect, the level of their comprehension and the level of their um, understanding of the world around. Um, and, and it was absolutely fascinating. You know, the, the, the conversations that we've had, the level of their, um, uh, their um, ability to, to, to speak uh, English, it was absolutely fascinating. It, it, it is India that is now in, in the modern era. And you could sense that, that India is advancing. India is taking its place as a rightful leader um, amongst nations in the world. And so we spent the New Year's Eve in Jaipur, again, a lovely city. They call it the pink city because of the uh, buildings. Um, we've also uh, visited a, an historical music museum at Jaipur. And you can see the suffering in, in within those walls of the Indians over time. Um, but in spite of that, there's resilience and they must be applauded for the resilience from, uh, to what they have achieved. Um, my shopping experiences were very pleasant. I, I think that in India, if you shop around, um, you can get true value for money in whatever you, you wanna purchase. Um, there's a variety, an absolute big variety of what you want. There's many places that you can visit to, to shop. And so you got to be that person that is um, looking properly in order, to engage into, in order to have a good shopping experience. And I say this because um, you gotta be very uh, vigilant about uh, the qualities, the different qualities. And of course, if you are, you will find the best bargains around uh, in India. The temples. Um, I, I had the pleasure of visiting many temples. Um, I also had the pleasure of uh, being, I, I went to the ashram, the Mahatma Gandhi ashram. And that was another um, fascinating and, and, and exhilarating experience for me, um, knowing that Mahatma Gandhi gave India um, its independence and to be in that, in those rooms that he studied and he uh, worked in was absolutely fascinating. It was just like going to Robben Island and visiting Nelson Mandela's cell. And of course, we are fortunate that we have two of the greatest men in the world who we have experienced, we have, had, we, 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 we have experienced in South Africa, Mahatma Gandhi and Nelson Mandela. The, 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 the fascination for me was in the art, the, 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 the turnaround time. Um, I think with, with the, an enormous population that it has, um, I'll give you an example. A person within our tour group ordered um, two three-piece suits and six shirts. He had them ordered at a tailor and he asked them to drop it off at his hotel. And mind you, within, within a day, those suits were made and it was delivered to the hotel. So the turnaround time is very quick. And it, it tells you that the Indians in India are prepared to work hard. They are passionate about what they are doing and they are absolutely meticulous in delivering the product that they uh, have set out to, to do. And so you get absolute quality in, 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 in that and you're getting turnaround time before the tour was able to leave the hotel, the suits were delivered. And that was something that, that was absolutely fascinating to all of us on the tour group. So I want to say that India, 
yes, I will travel there again. And my plan is to go south. I've traveled north um, and I want to travel south. I want to travel to, to Chennai um, and, and of course Goa um, because I believe that the area is the, the, the coastal town of Goa is more or less like uh, Durban. And so I want to experience that, that area and that uh, setting and that, the, the people that live in Goa. So I've had an, a very pleasurable experience in India and I will highly recommend India to any tourist who, is, who wants to travel to India. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jay Pillay, for sharing that with us. I mean, and it's good to hear of the progress and how people have developed and the service delivery because it's so hard to find that. So thank you for that and all the best with your future trips to India. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for having me once again. Thank you. It's only a pleasure. With in saying that, we have now come to the end of this, our 16th episode of Bharat Ek Anubuddhi, India, A Feeling. And I would like to hand over to Mr. Simpiwe Umchunu of the Swami Vekanandan Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India, Durban, South Africa, to render us with the vote of thanks. Mr. Simpiwe Umchunu. Namaskar, greetings to all of you. On behalf of Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India in Durban, it gives me a great pleasure to deliver a vote of thanks on today's 16th episode of the program, India A Feeling. Today we had wonderful Online, online guest, Ms. Uh, Mogi Gavender, principal at Stan Grove Primary School in Phoenix, and also Mr. J. Pillay, principal at Morland's Primary School in Chestworth. On behalf of Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center in Devon, I'd like to say to Mogi Ji and uh, Mr. J.P. Leiji Danyabat for narrating such a you know, wonderful and touching story about the India that we all know. The India that doesn't sleep, the India that works hard for its citizens, the India that, you know, when you are in India, it's a, it's a land of so many things, you know. So thank you for reminding us uh, that wonderful things that are happening in India to Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Director of the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, Ms. Nilega Srikasan, our Program Director, Danyabat Mem, allow me to take this opportunity to welcome you also. Thank you for the great work that you did this evening. Thank you, ma'am. And also allow me to thank Mr. Shilmena, thank you very much, sir, for taking part on today's program. To all our online participants who took part this evening, we'd like to say Danyavat for joining us. For more info about cultural updates, please visit ICCR in Deben Facebook page so that you will be you will have more information. Once again, to Ms. Mogi Gavendaji, Danyavad Mem, Mr. V. Pile, Danyavad Sir, to all of you have a wonderful evening. Namaskar. <laughs>